Hi guys, I'm Nancy and I'm going to show you how to solve a system of equations using elimination. I know, I know, you're probably thinking, why do I need another way to solve? Good question. You don't. It's just that sometimes this way is faster, so then you'll have options. And sometimes you've just been told that you have to do it this way. Anyway, let me show you how to do it. Okay, so say you have to solve a system of linear equations using elimination. What does that mean? It just means to find x and y. The x and y that work for both equations, that make both equations true. And this way of solving is called elimination because we want to eliminate a variable, get rid of a variable when we try to solve. You'll see what I mean. And by the way, sometimes this is called linear combination, if you see that. Anyway, let's look at this one. The first step with all of these problems is make sure that both equations are lined up and ordered the same way. So the x terms, one above the other, the y terms lined up vertically, equal signs. And then on the right, just the numbers, the constant terms alone on the right side by themselves. So this one's perfect. It's already ordered. You'd be surprised. Sometimes they're a mess. But this one's ready for us to just go ahead and try to add the equations. That's the next step. We are actually going to add these equations vertically up and down to make a new equation. That might be really weird. You may have never done that before. But we're going to make a new equation. And what you want to do is think vertically up and down and add that way. And what we really want are for two terms to cancel, add to zero. So we're looking for like a positive and negative version of the same number, like five and negative five, because they will add to zero and eliminate and disappear and let us solve. So I think it's gonna work out for this one. But let me show you what I mean. Next up is to add the two equations vertically. We really are adding them. <laughs> it's a little weird, but up and down, think this way. 2x plus 3x is 5x. So we write that in our new equation. 5y plus negative 5y, or 5y minus 5y, will give us 0y. 0, but we can write 0y plus 0y. And then we have an equal sign in our new equation. And then on the right side, we add the numbers. 11 plus 4 is 15. Okay, so this is our new equation. And I wrote the 0y there just to show you what happened. We don't have to write that. It's 0. It's nothing. It eliminated or disappeared. So this is really just 5x equals 15. And this is great because we got rid of the y variable, and now we can actually solve for x. So we want to solve for x, get x alone, and since there's a 5 multiplied by x right now, we divide out 5 from both sides. So the 5's here go away, it's just 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3, so we have x equals 3. That's our x value. That's good, we have a number, but that is not the whole answer. So you're not done. You also have to find y, unfortunately. The whole solution will have x and y in it. How do we get y? We take the x number we just found and plug it into an original equation, either of the original equations up here. So you can pick whichever one. I'm going to pick the first one, and we take 3 and plug it in for x. So I took 3 and plugged it in for x. In this first equation, I picked this one, so 2 times 3 plus 5y, 2 times 3 plus 5y equals 11. And now we just have a y variable, so we're going to be able to solve for y. Let's simplify this. 2 times 3 is 6. And what we really want is y alone, so we need to get the y term 5y alone and subtract off this number 6, so minus 6, minus 6 from both sides. So we have 5y equals 
11 minus 6 is also 5. And now we want to get y by itself, so we divide out 5 from both sides. We have y equals 5 over 5. That's 1. So we have a number for y and for x. We usually write the answer as a pair, an xy pair, and put them together. So this is the answer, 3 comma 1, that's an x, y pair, and I know there are two numbers here, but this is one solution. It just happens to be a coordinate pair. So this system has one unique solution. That's the answer. You can check these numbers if you want. So take the x and y number and plug them back into the original equations. And if you do, you'll see that it works and checks out. You don't have to do that. This is the answer. So that's it. Just so you know, this kind is the simplest kind where the two equations that you're given are kind of handed to you on a silver platter with a positive and negative version of terms that will add to zero and cancel beautifully, which is great. That could happen. But what if you add the equations and terms don't add to zero and cancel right away? What do you do? Let me show you. Okay, so sometimes things are a little nastier and just adding the equations is not enough. Like in this example, if we added these two equations, the x terms wouldn't cancel and the y terms wouldn't cancel, so we have to do something else. What do you do? You have to get a little more calculating and tweak one of the equations, or try to tweak one of the equations by multiplying it by a number, the whole thing, and then adding the equations. So look at this example. Would be great if the x terms would cancel or the y's, but right now, if you look at the x terms, we have negative 4x and then just x in the other equation. And how great would it be if this were already positive 4x and then we just added the equations and the x terms went away? We don't have that, but we can make it. We can make what we want, a 4x here, if, if we multiply the whole thing, the whole equation, by 4. So we're multiplying this whole second equation by 4, and I think it's a really good idea to rewrite both equations so you can see it all very clearly. Okay, so the first equation is just the same. We didn't change it at all. The second equation, everything gets multiplied by 4, both the left side and the right side. So instead of x, we have 4x. Instead of negative 2y, we have negative 8y, an equal sign. And then this is really important. Instead of 3, you have 12. So don't forget to multiply the number that's on the right side also by the 4. It's really easy to forget. So this is our new system of equations, and it's much better for adding and canceling things. So let's try doing that. We're going to add the equations vertically. So negative 4x plus positive 4x is 0x. Positive 8y plus negative 8y is 0y and 9 plus 12 is 21. The 0x and 0y are just nothing zero, so we can write zero. And we have zero equals 21, which is really weird. What is that? That can happen, and I gave you this one on purpose so that you see this case. It's a special case, but you're probably going to see this sooner or later. And what this means is that there is no solution because this is not true. It's nonsense. Zero does not equal 21. It's always false. So you have no solution, and you can just write that. And it's no solution because there will never be any x and y combinations that ever make that true. It is always going to be false. So no solution. You might also hear that that's an inconsistent system. There's one other kind of special case. If instead of 0 equals a number, 0 equals 21, 
you had gotten something like zero equals zero, or one equals one, something equals itself, like nine equals nine, anything like that that looks like that is another special case where there are infinitely many solutions, and you would write that. So that's like a side note in case you ever got that, something like zero equals zero, one equals one. It's another special case, and the reason it's infinitely many, like many, many solutions is that these are always true, no matter what x and y are, so they're true for like all x, y combinations. That's why you have many, many solutions. So these are actually special cases, no solution and infinitely many solutions. The answer here was no solution. I gave this, to, this one to you so that you see it, because it's something you'll probably see sooner or later. But it doesn't take away from the fact that this method works, that sometimes you have to change one equation by multiplying by a number and then adding. So hang on to that. That's the right way to do a lot of these problems. And also, by the way, like there's not one right way to do elimination. I focused on the x's and making sure they canceled. You could focus on the y's and make sure they cancel. It's really up to you. It's whichever is easier for you. You have a choice. And if you're wondering why are you even doing elimination, why didn't you just use substitution from the beginning, solve for x and then plug it into the other equation? That might be easier. You might be right. Good job. If you want to do it that way, you can. But we're all here because either we have to use elimination or because we want to. So that's why I'm showing you the elimination method. And now I want to show you a kind that's a little trickier even, where you have to multiply both equations by a number before you can add and eliminate. Okay, here's another kind. First of all, this is a mess. Everything's out of order. Nothing's right about this order. Let's clean it up and line everything up. Okay, so now everything's ordered correctly. We have the x's lined up vertically, the y's, the numbers by themselves on one side. If you want to put the y's before the x's, you can. Just make sure that you do the same in both equations. So now, check to see if you could just add these two equations and have the x's cancel or the y's cancel. If you're looking at this, like that won't happen because the terms here, the x terms, aren't exactly the same number and opposite coefficients, same with the y's. So then check to see if there's a number you could multiply one of the equations by, either this one or that one, and then add so that things cancel. You can check. Um, if you focus on the x's, there's no number you can multiply 3 by to get 5, and same for 4 and 9, since 9 is not a multiple of 4, 5 is not a multiple of 3. So that won't work. So this is a type where you're going to have to multiply both equations by a number in order to make something cancel. How do you do that? You want to aim for the same number here and here. So let's focus on the x's. What you're aiming for is the same coefficient here, but opposite sign. So Really what it is you can always use is the least common multiple, the LCM. So for the numbers 3 and 5, the LCM, the least common multiple, would be 15, since 3 times 5 is 15 and 5 times 3 is 15. So we can aim for the least common multiple. So let's do that. And that means we multiply the top equation by all by 5, and the second equation all by negative 3. And I'm saying negative 3 because what you really want is same number but opposite sign coefficients. Okay, so for the first equation, I multiplied everything by 5, and I mean everything. So we have 5 times 3, 15x plus 
5 times 4y is 20y, and then the right side, don't forget, 2 times 5 is 10. For the second equation, multiply everything by negative 3, so we have negative 15x, which we want, minus 27y, since we have 9 times negative 3, negative 27y, equals positive 18, since negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. And now, after all that, we are ready to just add and eliminate and solve. So I added vertically. These terms cancel beautifully. That's what we want. 20y minus 27y is negative 7y. So we have 0x here minus 7y equals 10 plus 18 is 28. So really, this is negative 7y equals 28. Divide both sides by negative 7. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive, positive 1 in this case. So they just disappear, these negative 7s. Just have positive y. And 28 divided by a negative 7 is a negative 4. Remember, you are not done. You have to find x also to have the complete solution. So use this, plug into one of these equations. I'll use the second one this time. You can use the set or the set, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to plug into this one. So I plugged in a negative 4 for y here. We have 5x equals negative 9 times negative 4 minus 6. Now we can solve this for x. Negative 9 times negative 4 is positive 36. Just keep simplifying. Divide both sides by 5. Okay, so we have x equals 6, and the whole answer, the complete solution, is the xy pair. So 6, negative 4. 6 comma negative 4 here, that's the answer. And if you want to check your work, you can and take those values for x and y, plug them in, make sure it works, you can do that. But this is the answer. Also, remember, with elimination, you have a choice. There's not one right way. I focused on the x terms and made sure those canceled with 15 and negative 15. You could just as easily have focused on the y terms and made sure those canceled with an LCM of 36, 4 times 9, and times 4. So 36 and negative 36 so that they cancel. That's fine. You have a choice. Speaking of choice, that brings me to my last thought. Okay, so it turns out you have a choice about whether you add the equations or subtract. So if you have a system where two terms are exactly the same, like positive 5y and positive 5y, if it's easier, you can just subtract the equations, and not add, and cancel, and solve. Or, by the way, you could take one of them, multiply it all by negative 1 so that you change the sign, and then add. Let me show you both ways. Okay, just so you see both ways what I'm talking about, you could either just subtract one equation minus the other, like we did here. So you get negative x, 2x minus 3x is negative x, 5y minus 5y is nothing, and 11 minus 14 is negative 3. That's totally valid. And then from there, you'd keep working it out the way you've done in all the others. Or if you want to stick to multiplying by things, you could multiply one of the equations by negative 1 so that it looks like this system, the sign flipped everywhere here, and then add those two equations because those terms will cancel and you get the same result. So either way, you can do either way you want to. So I hope this video helped you solve by elimination. I'm sure algebra is exactly what you wanted to be doing right now. It's okay, you don't have to like math. But you can like my video, so if you did, please click like or subscribe.